Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from azureautomation.com and welcome to an all new series from Azure Automation on Spring Boot for automation testing. This is the first ever course probably on a YouTube series which talks a lot about Spring Boot along with automation testing. It can be a UI tech, it can be a microservices level of API testing tech. We are going to be covering all of them together in this particular series. So the Spring Boot for automation testing, what is this all about? What is the Spring Boot if you have never really heard about it? Or if you have really heard about Spring Framework and Spring Boot is something you have yet to explore, then probably this is going to be very, very easy for you, like a cakewalk. But if you have never heard about Spring Framework or Spring Boot, then this course is something that you should be looking for. And this is what we'll be talking about in this particular series. And once again, in this series, we'll be focusing more towards Spring Boot itself, rather the UI tech It can be Selenium or Playwright for that matter. We're not going to be focusing a lot on those automation testing tool tech, but we're going to be fusing those automation testing tool within this Spring Boot framework. So basically Spring Boot itself is a framework and we're going to be using UI automation testing tech within the Spring Boot framework, or it can be a API testing tech like rest assured, we're going to be fusing that in this Spring Boot framework as well. So that's what we'll be doing in this particular course. So it's going to be Spring Boot focused for automation testing, rather the automation testing tool focused like Selenium or rest assured, because we have talked about that a lot in many of our series and courses. All right, so let's talk about the Spring framework. So if you see the Spring Framework, well, Spring Framework is something available for almost 16 plus years right now. So it's launched first in 2003 and it's still there and it is especially used to develop the enterprise grade Java applications, which is what Spring Framework is all about. So Spring Framework is super popular and it is open source and it has a large and active community that provides continuous feedbacks based on diverse range of real world use cases. It can be anything. So a lot of companies are really using Spring Framework to develop their applications. And Spring exists from 2003, as I told you, it has got a different modules, a lot of different modules and integrations which you can keep on extending with. And beyond the Spring Framework, there are other projects such as Spring Boot, Spring Security, Spring Data, Spring Cloud, Spring Batch, like this, which are also very, very popular in the Spring Framework tech. And in this particular series, as we know, we are gonna be focusing on just one project, which is the Spring Boot of the Spring Framework. And as I told you, Spring Boot itself is like a framework. So the Spring Boot, what is this Spring Boot all about? Well, Spring Boot makes it easy to create a standalone production grade Spring based application that you can just run. So basically you can create a production grade Spring application and you can just run in less than probably less than two minutes. So that's what I think uh, Spring Boot is kind of very, very popular. And I will show you how it actually happens in our next couple of videos. But yes, this is what is Spring Boot's power altogether. And Spring Boot always prioritizes the convention over the configuration as a model for simpler programming. And if you really think, what is this convention or configuration? And probably it's like, if you're gonna be a programmer or if you're gonna be a tester, you will be focusing only on writing the code just for testing the application. So that is convention. Rather, writing a lot of configuration codes, like how to resolve the dependencies, what are the dependencies that you really require, or what are the objects to manage, and how to manage the web driver instance, and all those things. If you are towards that, then probably you'll focus or lose focus on convention, which is your test case, rather the configuration, which is maintaining the object of the web driver. And that's the reason Spring Boot is very, very powerful. So I'm just talking everything on the context of automation here, but Spring Boot is much, much, much bigger than what we are really discussing about. And there are many features Spring Boot has got and few of them which I have taken directly from the Spring Boot websites are these. It creates a standalone Spring application much easily and embeds a Tomcat or Jetty 
or undertow directly within the Spring Boot app. So you don't really need to deploy this application that you are building in Spring Boot onto a uh, onto an Apache server or Tomcat server, like a var file. You don't have to do that. It has an embedder Tomcat server and it provides optionated starter dependencies to simplify your build configuration. Every configuration dependencies will be automatically available for you and resolved for you. And it automatically configures Spring and third-party libraries whenever possible and provides production-ready features such as metrics, health checks, and externalized configurations. Absolutely no code generation and no requirement for XML configurations. So these are some of the cool things about Spring Boot. And because Spring Boot is really, really bigger, I cannot really cover everything that Spring Boot can do. At least we can focus on the Spring Boot, what it can do that is required for our automation testing. And that's what we'll be discussing in this whole series. Coming back to the Spring Boot for automation testing. Why do we require Spring Boot in test automation code? That's the first question that you need to ask because all these days, Selenium Java code is working fine. We have discussed about it a lot. We have a full video series. We have a complete framework development series on Selenium Java. It's all working fine. We have managed Selenium Web driver in a much simpler fashion, all those things like a thread safe driver object for running the parallel test and all those things. It works pretty good. But why do we suddenly require a Spring Boot in test automation code? Well, the first thing about writing the code is the cleaner code and Spring Boot has a very, very cleaner looking code if you really write it pretty well. And similarly, it is easy to maintain the API dependencies like Selenium or Rest Assured or Playwright much, much easily. And I will talk about what are these in our upcoming videos of this series, but you'll really understand how easy it is to maintain them. And it is easy to play around with different environments, files, and parallel execution that you really wanted to in a much easier fashion in Spring Boot. So this is just in a nutshell that I'm talking about, but there are more than what the Spring Boot can do for you while you really use the Spring Boot in the automation. And finally, everything is annotated in Spring Boot, like at symbol or the here string symbol. So as I told you, the convention over configuration, the code is gonna look something like this. As you can see, the first part over here, as you can see, this is the Spring Boot code that you are seeing over here. This Spring Boot code actually has got the code which is just performing what you are trying to do. Basically like navigating to the page, clicking the login link, and then entering the username and password, and then clicking the login again in the home page, in the login page, to log in and perform the business operation that you are looking for. So this is the convention that we are talking about. Whereas if we talk about the classical code that we usually write over here, as you can see here, we are trying to create the web drivers object. And we are trying to maintain the web driver object. And this is the most headache thing that we always try to have or try to resolve, which is maintaining the web driver object, not like a static object, and then using it or putting it on a base class and then trying to access it with thread safe code and all those things. You don't really have to do all these things in this Spring Boot code, and this is what is called as configuration. So you are trying to maintain or hold the configuration of your drivers and stuff within your code as much as possible. You are just maintaining or focusing more on the configuration rather than the convention here. So you want to pass the web driver, then you need to maintain the web driver object here, and you are navigating it here, you're passing it to the home page. So you're trying to maintain it. And if you're going to move in a different class file, in a different method, then you need to pass the web driver as an object in different class files, which is also a really, really bigger pain. So that is one of the configuration which I'm talking about. And similarly, see the next one. We have the home page object being created. And because the click login method actually requires a home page, it actually is expecting the object to be coming from this instance variable to click the login. And it's gonna be returning you a login page object because we're doing a page navigation here. So it's gonna do that and then it's gonna perform the rest of the operation. So this is kind of very, very painful even though it looks pretty simple while we were not even discussing about the Spring Boot. 
So that is the pain that we actually have with the classical Java code versus the Spring Boot code. Well, if you have got a bit of idea, we're gonna cover a lot about that in our next lecture of this series, like how to really, really see the difference. But as of now, this is what it is. And finally, if you talk about what is this series and how the agenda of this series is gonna look like, it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna have a Spring Boot basic section and then it's going to have a Spring Boot with UI testing tool section. It can be Selenium, it can be Playwright, whatever it is. But I'm going to take Selenium for now, but we can use Playwright as well if you want. And then we're going to have a section dedicated for Spring Boot with microservices and API testing. And, and these are the three sections that we will be covering in this whole series. So I'm pretty excited to see you all joining this series. So let's get started and learn a lot about the Spring Boot. Meet you in our next lecture.